Shohei Otani breaks his silence on the Ipe Mizuhara gambling scandal. We have everything you need to know. What's next for Shohei? That's coming up next here on Dodgers Dugout. It's time for Dodger Baseball. That's three straight three. Dodgers have won it all in 2020. Mookie Betts. I don't care how many times this team rips my heart out, I'll never stop loving the Los Angeles Dodgers. Big blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. What is up, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here, credentialed member of Dodgers Media. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Now, if you haven't yet, do me a huge favor and subscribe to the number one Dodgers YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button. And also comment done down below so you're eligible for our next giveaway at 90,000 subscribers. Little under the weather right now, so we haven't been going live, but we will be back with the morning live streams very shortly. Dodgers dugout live and the post game shows all season long. Got some exciting news about this show that we'll reveal a little later this week. So be on the lookout for that. But also, I, I want all your takes down below. What is your reaction to Shohei Otani's? press conference today his statement to the media what are your thoughts what are your big takeaways what do you think will ultimately come of this i want all your takes down below and for all latest dodgers news head over to dodgersnation.com so we have so much to get into about the ipe mizuhara gambling scandal so let's get right into it i just got back from dodgers stadium just minutes ago where i attended the shohei otani press conference where he read a statement about ipe mizuhara and this gambling scandal that has really started to rise Major League Baseball. Just some initial thoughts being in that room are one, that is the most packed I've seen that room. We're talking about the NLDS. We're talking about Fernando Valenzuela's jersey retirement. Nope, this is the most packed that room has been. You had tons of Japanese media members. You had the LA-based media members. You had national media members. There were so many people in that room that they didn't even allow cameras inside because there's really nowhere to put them just because they had to accommodate everyone who was in there. And then when Shohei Otani finally walked in, he didn't come by himself. You had Dodgers president of baseball operations, Andrew Friedman. You had Brandon Gomes, Dodgers general manager. You had manager Dave Roberts. You had teammates Joe Kelly and Kike Hernandez. You had some other club officials. You had Juan Dorado from Dodgers PR. So there was a lot of people. Lon Rosen was there. Pretty much the Dodgers brass was there alongside Shohei Otani, and Otani was holding this black book, and in that black book contained his prepared statement, and he and his new translator, Will Ireton, they got right into it. Now, my first big takeaway was that Shohei Otani immediately came out and said that he did not bet on baseball. He said, I never bet on baseball or any other sports or never have asked somebody to do that on my behalf, and I have never went through a bookmaker to bet on sports. So this was the number one thing that you were looking for. This was something that needed to be said by Shohei Otani, that he did not bet on baseball, that he did not bet on sports. So the most serious thing that could have came from this would have been if there's some link to him betting on baseball. That would have led to a potential year suspension, to a potential lifetime ban. None of that is even possible at this point. He did not bet on baseball. That was the first thing and the most important thing that I was looking to hear, and he came out right away and addressed that. Now, the second big takeaway was he said, I didn't know that Ipe had a gambling addiction. He would say, the first time I knew about Ipe's gambling was after the first game in Korea when we had the team meeting in the clubhouse. During the team meeting, obviously, Ipe was speaking in English, and I didn't have a translator on my side, but even with that, I kind of understood what was going on and started to feel that there was something amiss. Prior to the meeting, I was told by Ipe, hey, let's talk one-to-one -one in the hotel after the meeting, so I waited until then. Up until that team meeting, I didn't know that Ipe had a gambling addiction and was in debt. Obviously, at that point, I obviously never agreed to pay off 
the debt or make payments to the bookmaker. Finally, when we went back to the hotel and talked one-to-one, that's when I found out that he had a massive debt, and it was revealed to me during that meeting that Ipe admitted that he was sending money using my account to the bookmaker. And at that moment, obviously, it was an absurd thing that was happening, and I contacted my representatives at that point. So here... This is extremely important because this backs up the second version of the story from ESPN, that Shohei Otani had absolutely no knowledge at all and no involvement in, one, eBay's bets, or two, covering up eBay's bets. So they are making eBay out to be someone who absolutely backstabbed Shohei Otani, somehow gained access to his accounts, was forging his signatures, was forging his way to be able to make these payments to this illegal bookie, and this was all over Otani's head. And look, I don't think this is completely unreasonable. We've seen this happen in entertainment. We've seen this happen in sports, where people close to the celebrity, people close to the superstar, they take advantage of their client, and they're greedy, and they see the money. They see how much money they're client is making and they're around it and they see all the glitz and glamour and the financial wherewithal they have and they want a piece of that action and this is a case where Otani's camp is saying that Ipe completely went rogue and did all this stuff by himself and he manipulated Shohei Otani because he was his translator. So the initial conversations with ESPN, the Otani spokesman said that Otani willingly paid Mizuhara's debts and the story that Mizuhara repeated in the one-on-run on the record interview with ESPN on Tuesday morning. Now, one explanation that you could have for the shifting of the stories is that Mizuhara had been translating and communicating for Otani this entire time. And Otani's representatives, they were getting false versions of these stories until Mizuhara finally said, you know what, the walls are closing in on me, I can't do anything at this point, and he said, you know what, I have to just absolutely come clean. So I think there was a moment where Ipe was trying to play both sides, he was trying to see if he could somehow save himself, but he ultimately realized he couldn't, and that's how this is framing that. So Otani eventually would say during the press conference, Ipe obviously lied about, basically didn't tell me about the media inquiry. Ipe has been telling everybody around that Ipe has been communicating with Shohei on all of this account to my representatives, to the team, and that hasn't been true. So Ipe was manipulating the journalist Tisha Thompson and ESPN in this situation, making it seem like Otani gave him his blessing to go out there and go with this story that Otani was willingly paying off his debts. Clearly, that was not the case, according to Shohei Otani. And then third biggest takeaway, Otani didn't agree to pay off the debt. Otani said, I never agreed to pay off the debt or make payments to the bookmakers. So that's a version of the story that was initially released. And that's another way where Otani is saying, I had zero involvement, zero knowledge. Now, the fourth big takeaway, all of this has been a complete lie. He, Otani said during the press conference, last week in Korea, media had reached out to a representative of my camp inquiring about my potential involvement in sports betting. Ipe never revealed to me that there was this media inquiry to the representatives in my camp. Ipe told the media and to my representatives that I, on behalf of a friend, paid off debt. Upon further questioning, it was revealed that it was actually, in fact, Ipe who was in debt and told my representatives that I was paying off those debts. All of this had been a complete lie. So once again, Otani saying that Ipe is trying to play him. He's trying to play the reporters. But he says it was a complete lie by Ipe Mizuhara. Fifth big takeaway, Otani was shocked. He said, I'm just beyond shocked. It's really hard to verbalize how I'm feeling at this point. Otani said he didn't know the full extent of Mizuhara's gambling or that he even was in debt until he addressed the Dodgers team in that team meeting in the clubhouse where they came out there and said, okay, there's a story that's going to come out and Ipe, you're going to address the team to tell them what it's about. Until that time, Otani had no knowledge of Ipe's gambling past. Otani didn't have a translator at the time, 
but he did know enough English to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together. And he said he kind of understood what was going on to know that something was amiss. So just imagine that Otani sitting in that Dodgers clubhouse. He sees his friend up there talking about gambling. He doesn't have his translator, so he's not getting the full translation, but he's saying they're like, what the hell's going on? Gambling? What are you talking about gambling? So that must have been a complete shock. There's some reports from Japanese media that Otani was really upset about this to the point where he was yelling and things like that, but that hasn't been confirmed. But you can tell that he was absolutely furious and absolutely blindsided and shocked by the betrayal of his once best friend, Ipe Mizuhara. Otani said, it was an absurd thing that was happening, and I contacted my representatives at that point. And then the sixth big takeaway is they're taking legal action. Otani said, my lawyers confirmed that since this is fraud, we have the proper authorities handle this matter. So this tells you everything you need to know. For anyone out there, all these haters out there saying, oh, this is Otani just going damage control. This is Operation Protect Shohei Otani. Ipe's the fall guy. Ipe is just taking one for his longtime friend, so he doesn't get in trouble and it doesn't tarnish his brand. Really, if that was the case, do you truly believe Otani's representatives would risk getting law enforcement involved and make up this massive theft? Do you truly believe that? Because we're going to see that Ipe Mizuhara is going to go to jail. He's most likely going to face time for doing something like this. The $4.5 million could be just the beginning. So the fact that they're actually taking legal action leads me to believe that their story is true. And then seventh, Otani said, looking to move on. Seventh biggest takeaway is Shohei Otani is looking to move on and focus on the upcoming season. He told us, I'm looking forward to focusing on this season. I'm glad that we had this opportunity to talk, and I'm sure there will be continuing investigations moving forward. So I know that's a lot of information. I know that's a lot to unpack there. And for me, it's just making it very clear to you that at this point, you really shouldn't be worrying too much about Shohei Otani if what he said today was true. And just reading his body language, he was confident. He was not stuttering up there. He was not stumbling over his words or anything like that. He was speaking very clearly, very confidently. He didn't even look nervous out there. He went there and he really just made some bold, bold statements. He said more than I expected. I think he's, he, I was talking to the other media members out there. He blew us away with how much he actually said and in detail what he said. I mean, he went into great detail about all this stuff. So I really left that press conference believing Shohei Otani. And I'm not being naive about this. I truly believe Shohei Otani because I don't think they would have gotten law enforcement involved. I do think that there was a world where Ipe was taking advantage of being his translator and playing both sides and finding a way to save his job by any means necessary. I mean, this is someone who is a proven liar at this point. I mean, go look at his college degree from UC Riverside. Oh, wait, what this guy go to Duolingo University? Come on now. This guy didn't work for the Boston Red Sox, okay? So this is someone who has been proven to be a liar. This is someone who has proven to take advantage of Shohei Otani. And this is another example in sports entertainment where someone very close to the superstar tries to get away with one. But in this case, it looks like Otani got ahead of this. And unfortunately for the team and Otani, it's an absolutely a distraction. But what I can tell you, speaking to insiders around Major League Baseball, is he's going to be okay. The Dodgers are going to be okay. They're going to get past this. And that's the feeling right now. He's not going to miss time. And pretty soon, I don't even think that this is going to blemish his brand. I think a couple days ago, I was like, you know what? Maybe this hurts Otani's brand. I think there's a world where Otani is 100% innocent. And that's what I'm leaning towards right now. So that was my takeaways from being there. Like I said, guys, not feeling so good right now. But you guys know I can't not get into Dodger baseball, especially a story this big. And let me know down below, what are your thoughts on Shohei Otani in the press conference? What were your big takeaways? Do you believe him? Do you believe everything that he said? If you're asking me, 
Gun to my head? I say yes. I truly believe the man up there and what he said. And it's sad. It's a shame. The betrayal from your best friend. Let's monitor that early on the season because they didn't allow questions. I was right up in the front. You guys know I try to, you know, I'm always getting my questions in, uh, raise your hand. You know how yeah, you do the, the kid who goes to class and he sits in the front of the class and try to get their questions in. That's me at these things, okay? And I was just wanting to ask him how big of an adjustment is it going to be adjusting to a new translator? Because this is someone who played a big role in his life. He was his driver. He was his friend. They spent Christmases together. They spent a lot of time together. And all of a sudden, he has a new translator. And I think that Will Ireton is phenomenal. I think he's going to be great. But it just makes you wonder, how big of a toll is it going to take on Otani mentally? How big of an impact is it going to have on his game, on his performance at the plate early on? Is this something that's keeping him up at night? I mean, he's someone who just got married pretty recently. He's on a new team. He's playing for the Dodgers, a lot of pressure. So let's monitor that early on. Let's monitor that and see how it goes because I'm sure it's going to be an adjustment. I mean, the communication there is very, very important for him. So let's just hope that he can get past this and he can find a way to heal from this. Let's be honest. This is very, very sad for Shohei Otani. Your best friend stole money from you. Your best friend stole money from you, and you are taking legal action against him, okay? I mean, it's a very serious story, but I think I was extremely impressed with Shohei Otani. I couldn't have been more impressed. I think he nailed today's press conference. I think he said a lot more than anyone thought he was going to say, and I thought that he really added a lot of clarity to the situation, and I think that we're going to look back, and this will be a small footnote in the Shohei Otani era for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And we're going to get back to focusing on having the best player in baseball, the best player in the universe, in Dodger Blue, because that's what the focus needs to be on and how great this is for the sport. But we'll come at you with some more updates. And like I said, we'll be back with the live streams. We'll be back with more content. I'm dropping two parts for the vlog for the career series. You guys will not want to miss that vlog. You got the mascots, the beer chugging, the dancers, the cheers, everything about it. I'm going hard on that vlog. I just dropped a interview with Ken Griffey Jr., my favorite player growing up. That was really cool. I got more interviews on the way. Also, we got a permanent Dodgers press pass credential this season. So I'll be going to tons of games. I can go to all the games if I want to and be live streaming, giving you behind the scenes access, player interviews all season long, guys. So be sure to keep it locked here at Dodgers Nation. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, drop the comments down below. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.